Manipogo, the lake monster. Hi, welcome to Murder, Monsters, and Mysteries. Strap in, grab some popcorn, smoke them if you got them, and let's talk about our monster for today. Our monster today is in Manitoba, Canada. Manitoba is Canada's eighth largest province, though there's only 10 provinces. But even so, it's huge with a land mass of 651,000 square kilometers. Canada's a big place. In Manitoba, Canada is a foreboding province with winter reaching as low as minus 40 degrees Celsius and summer as hot as plus 40 degrees Celsius. I have some experience with Manipogo myself. I haven't seen it, but growing up, my family owned a couple cabins on Lake Manitoba in the St. Laurent area. Manitoba is a pretty sparsely populated province. So there are a lot of people who have passed down things like cabins from generation to generation for quite a long time. My family's cabin had been built by my grandparents and had been used by three generations of Andriches. I remember my father telling me stories about neighbors he knew who swear that they saw a creature swimming through Lake Manitoba. These are friends, neighbors, people you usually learn to trust. The word cryptid was first used by Manitoba's John E. Wall in 1983 to describe animals sought by cryptozoologists. Manitoba has an estimated population of 1.4 million people. The province has a population density of about two people per square kilometer, or six per square mile. There are a lot of famous people from Manitoba. Anna Paquin, Tracy Spiricados, Deanna Durbin, Ashley Banfield, Doug Henning, Daniel Gillis, Nia Vardalos. Famous bands and musicians include Neil Young, The Guess Who, Bachman Turner Overdrive, Biff Naked, The Crash Test Dummies, Venetian Snares, Comeback Kid, Burton Cummings, The Watchmen, and many more. Another thing famous to come from Manitoba is monsters. The term cryptid was invented in Manitoba. Bruce, the Mosasaur, seen in this photo, was found just outside of Morden, Manitoba, in a farmer's field in 1974. Could these monsters still exist? Most witnesses who have seen this creature report it shrieking or crying as it surfaces the water. The name Manipogo was created by Tom Locke, a land inspector in charge of planning the provincial government's program for public playgrounds and recreational parks, so quite a reputable source. On August 10th, 1960, he and 16 others said they saw three creatures swimming near the area of Tout 80s, a community 245 kilometers northwest of Winnipeg. Although Tom was the one to name the creature, First Nations stories of Manipogo go back centuries. The first documented sighting by a white settler came in 1909, when the Hudson Bay Company fur trader Valentine McKay claimed to see a huge creature in Cedar Lake. Timber inspector C.F. Ross and a friend were next, saying they saw a single horned creature that looked like a dinosaur in 1935. And in 1948, C.P. Ulrich claimed to see something rise up from Lake Manitoba and let out a prehistoric type of dinosaur cry, as he described it. The list goes on. 1957. Louis Belcher and Eddie Nipanik say they saw a giant serpent-like creature in the lake. August 12, 1962, two fishermen, Richard Vincent and John Conefall, claimed to have seen a large creature, like a serpent or giant snake, from their boat on Lake Manitoba near the mouth of the Water Hen River. 1960s, a couple say they saw a reptile-like beast surfacing about 10 meters from their boat terrifying. 1989, Sean Smith and family visiting from Minneapolis on a camping trip stayed at Shallow Point Campground off Highway 6 on Lake Manitoba. 
He described seeing many humps in the lake, about 25 meters offshore. 1997, several reports by cross-country campers from Quebec staying at the Lundar Beach campground describe what appeared to be a large reptile head rising and falling in the water, more than 100 meters offshore. Swimmers were asked to leave the water, but the head only appeared one time. It was dismissed as a floating log, but no log was seen afterwards. 2004, commercial fisherman Keith Hayden, originally from Newfoundland and Labrador, reported that several of his fishing nets on Lake Manitoba near the Narrows were torn up by what seemed like an ocean shark or killer whale. The fish that were in the nets were not nibbled on, but actually torn in half, he said, by what seemed like huge bites. 2009. Several residents at Twin Lakes Beach reported seeing several humps a few hundred meters from their lakefront cottages. No photos were taken, as the group was too terrified to reach for their phones. 2011. Many sightings of several humps emerging and then submerging, seen from offshore, were reported at locations like Marshy Point, Scotch Bay, and Laurentia Beach by security personnel patrolling flooded cottage and home areas. You gotta take these reports seriously when it's from security personnel on duty. And that's only a little over 10 years ago. August 9th, 2012, a report claimed that just offshore of the outlet of Twin Beach Road, something surfaced twice, showing a scaled, sawtooth, jagged back like that of a giant sturgeon. There have been attempts to try to find Manipogo. Rutkowski noted, in the 1960s, Professor and zoologist James McLeod was inspired by the stories in the discovery decades earlier of a vertebrae next to one of the lakes. He explored some caves and crevices in the lakes, but found nothing to support the monster claims. As for the bone, it was discounted as likely being from an ancient sea beast that once swam the inland sea, covering the province after the last ice age. The only photo to ever surface from a Manipogo witness was taken by Richard Vincent in August 1962 when he and John Conefall were on a fishing trip near Meadow Portage, a stretch of land between Lake Winnipegosis and Lake Manitoba. They followed the creature to get a picture but it moved quickly and kept out of reach of their 10 horsepower boat. All Vincent could do was snap a blurry photo from several meters away. Critics dismissed it as a log with limbs and also pointed to the fact that there is no wake visible in the photo, which should exist if the creature was swimming faster than the boat. Vincent and Cohenfall in subsequent years were reluctant to discuss the sighting, with Vincent no longer calling it a monster but just something in the lake most likely due to people doubting his original story. Some people believe that Manipogo is no more than a large sturgeon. According to Manitoba Hydro, Lake Sturgeon never stopped growing and are the largest freshwater fish in Manitoba. The average size is about 1.5 meters, though they can grow up to 2.5 meters and weigh over 140 kilograms. So what do you think guys, is there a monster lurking below the waves of Lake Manitoba? Or are all the countless witnesses over hundreds of years mistaken? Thank you for watching Murder, Monsters and Mysteries. We'll be uploading more videos every week, so please like and subscribe if you enjoyed what you saw.